one of the best in the, the business of calling games. Three-time Pro Bowl, a 14-year NFL veteran, courtesy of Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey. Oh, yeah. As if Wait, we haven't had enough. Did you guys ever have any Did you bring some, Greg? Greg Do we have any Fireball? Because <laughs> we've already finished the Fireball. Guys, uh, that's a tough act to follow. Right. I heard, they don't need it anymore. I, I heard you guys. I had some, but they told me to leave it backstage. Uh, they said, oh, no, they no, said the no, last no segment. More. Come on. They said the last segment was a little much. This is a dry hour. Guys, this is professional television. Thank you, Greg. What the hell? <laughs> it's a tough act to follow. How do, I, how do I follow that and then Kenny Chesney? I mean, what, Be your, what? yourself, Greg Olson. God, That's what you Greg follow Olson, up. man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Doing great. Good to see you, no, man. You are so great at calling games. You are stupendous. And I say this to you every time. Uh, I, I knew you had the chops when you would just come on NFL Network at the Combine. That was fun. Being out there on the field with the guys. Talking that was great, wasn't it? It was great. It really was great. When you're, so you're you're awesome at what you do. What what did what what happened with the 49ers the last two games that you saw to try and explain how I, I guess they can either win or potentially not. What do we take away essentially from the two games? Well, I, I think you can take away two things. I think you can take away that in the playoffs they haven't played their best ball yet, which right. could be good and bad, right? So obviously there's still room to grow. They can still play better. They sh they showed it pretty much the entire regular season, give or take a couple games, that when they're at their best, they're a tough beat, right? They're, they're as good a roster, as good a coaching staff, philosophy and structure as there is in the, in the NFL. They weren't at their best, but having said all of that, the NFL, you're very rarely going to always have your A game. You're very rarely always going to be at your best and have everything go your way. They found themselves trailing both the divisional and championship round. Yeah. Credit to Brock Purdy, that offense, the defense got stops that they needed to in the second half against Detroit. And when it mattered the most, something they have not done well under Kyle Shanahan, which is play from behind, play, come back and win games when, when trailing in the fourth quarter, they were able to do it twice in a row. That bodes well because – I don't anticipate either one of these teams going too far ahead of the other. This is going to come down to the end most likely, and the teams that handle those pressure moments, those special situations, manage the clock, manage timeouts, and play the best situational ball, they're the teams that win these close games. Well, I mean, it's kind of tough then to not think the Chiefs are going to win this because they've been through the most they of have. these wars, right? They're now taking a different path to the Super Bowl than the one that they've, they've already won taking, right? And then this is a tougher one would say crucible to knock off the two and then the one seeds in those seeds houses and back to back weeks. Yep. You know so it's tough to think that they're not going to be the ones playing the best situational football when the game's on the line. Yeah, and, you know? and listen, that's a credit to Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. They've been, I mean, Andy's been doing this forever, and of course, the two of them have been doing it together now for a long time. I think what's unique, though, about this Kansas City journey is, at, yes, Mahomes and Kelsey and Andy Reid, they're always going to be the main, the headline of the story. This is a defensive story. This is Steve Spagnuolo and this young defense that was supposed to be a transition year last year, mm -hmm. starting three or four rookies on that Super Bowl winning team last season. And because of Patrick Mahomes and, and Kelsey and Andy Reid, the offense kind of carried them and allowed them to weather some of those young, you know, early NFL, early, you know, kind of trials and tribulations that young players go through. And now it's completely flipped. You know, they and what years ago, if, if you would have said that Patrick Mahomes was going to score 17 points in a playoff game, you'd have said their season be over. Toast. They win it. They beat Baltimore scoring 17 points. This is a defensive led team with the best quarterback in the league. And that's they knew they had to make that investment on the young side because of how much cap that Mahomes takes up. And he knows he has to make up for some of these new receivers and get Rasheed Rice up to speed. Of course, he's always got Kelsey, but there's a lot on Mahomes' shoulders, rightfully so. But this defense, they're the story for Kansas City going in. So then knowing the 49ers offense the way you do and having seen it the last two games, in person, how equipped is Kansas City to do it for a, I guess, fourth straight game against San Francisco in a playoff? Yeah, and I think that's the question. I think it's going to be interesting to see how Shanahan comes out of the gates. We, we thought last week against Detroit, or two weeks ago against Detroit now, in the NFC Championship game, we said early on in the call, the, the approach for San Francisco was, this Detroit team is fantastic against the run. They pride themselves on stopping, but they are very susceptible against the pass, right? This needed to be a pass-heavy approach, and they didn't really do that early on, and then their big comeback was really spurred through the passing game. I think this week against Kansas City, if you find your 
yourself in a trail, you find yourself playing from behind, you find yourself in a million third and longs. With this pressure package and the ability of Steve Spagnola to build the, the blitzes and the corners off the edge and Legarius Sneed and the ability to use multiple personnel groupings to throw off your rules and your assignments, it gets challenging. So I think early on, it's a heavy dose of McCaffrey, it's a heavy dose of, of Brock Purdy under center, hard play action pass on early downs, use the complement of the run game. I don't think this is a race to 30 points like it would be in past years against Mahomes where you'd say, okay, we, we can't sit here and sit on the ball because Mahomes is going to have 30. I, I think this is a low 20s, maybe mid 20s type game. Very different than last year's you know, Super Bowl where you know both teams were north of 30. Greg Olson here on the Rich Eisen Show. Your production meeting conversations with Brock Purdy. Uh, what what impression can you express here? You know, it's cool. We, we got to call his kind of debut game last year, his first start. Um, I believe it was against, against Brady. Yeah, it was against Brady. It was in, in Tampa. Tampa. It was against Tampa in San Francisco. Yeah. So we called that game. So it's been cool to kind of be along and see not only his growth as a player, but also his growth in the production meetings, the growth in his ability to answer tough questions and deal with the media. It's been, it's been really cool. And I think for the success that he's had and all the wins that he's had and all the scrutiny for whatever reason that people continue to have which is somewhat dumbfounding you forget that he's only started one full season I mean, he's took over week 14 or 15 of last year he hasn't even played a season and a half yet right and people want to you know make a big indictment of what his year what his future looks like it's and coming it's really back remarkable. from a, a huge yeah, he blew, arm we, surgery. we called that game too i mean we've been there for the highs and lows of brock purdy I mean, right. we were there in the nfc game championship game last year when he blew out his ucl and they couldn't attempt a forward pass in the second half against philly yeah, and then you were there for the game against Philly this year when they had a little redemption. eviscerated yeah, it's, them. Uh, it's been fun following them. They're, they're a great story, and Shanahan's as good as it gets, and, man, they got some dudes on that team that are as good as it gets. But straight up, when Purdy strolled into that production meeting room fresh off of filling in for Jimmy G, and this is his first start against Brady. And yeah, he's, we were like – Because, again, you're, bro, you're, you're judging a book by its cover. Yeah, he was you're the like, third guy. You're like, Bambi's going to get eaten by the wolves here, right? I mean oh, – We yeah. don't know what to expect. I'll be honest. We, You know, obviously we knew his career at Iowa State. We knew, obviously, he was a successful four-year starter. Yeah. Started 48-some-odd games, something like that. So, I mean, he was, he was an experienced quarterback in general, just not at the NFL level, of course, as a – you know, as the last pick as a rookie. But, you know – Trey, Trey Lance started, then Jimmy G went in, he gets hurt. So, I mean, when you get to your third quarterback, expectations are very low, and that's not unique to Brock, or that's just the unique nature of the NFL. Most teams don't have two quarterbacks, let alone three, but you can't say enough about the way he's handled it. He's wise and mature beyond his years. He does a great job blocking out a lot of the noise that surrounds him and those narratives, and uh, he also gets the benefit, which is not an indictment on him at all, but he gets the benefit of playing with a tremendously talented offensive group with one of the best offensive play callers in the league. Travis Kelsey is one of the best in the business, Greg Olson. And uh, how, how does he continuously get so wide open? It is it is, it is just mind-blowing because uh, you know the Niners circled Kelsey and you know the Ravens circled Kelsey and you he got 11 targets and he caught all 11 of them. Yeah, it's – I mean it, – it, There's certain guys that just exceed – reality they just exceed expectations year in year out it seems like Kelsey for for as good as he is in the regular season he's even somehow even better and when you find yourself in the postseason categories where you're chasing and passing Jerry Rice yeah that's pretty rarefied air and and you know I think what's unique you mentioned like why is he always so open yes every week there is a guy wearing a jersey that says number 87 he's on the scout team and on every snap it's all right 87 we got to make sure you got him covered and then the game comes, and it looks like nobody knew that he was going to have the ball thrown to him. And a lot of that is because what you prep for Kelsey, the routes that you know that coach draws up on the little cards that he shows the scout team, that's not how the that's not how the game unfolds. That's not how he runs the routes. Him and Mahomes have a really unique understanding of timing, spacing, and when the ball needs to come out and where it needs to be thrown. And as long as he's in that general area, they're fine. How he gets there, the tempo of it. The route, it doesn't look like the line on a piece of paper. It's very hard for defenses to prepare for the uncertainty of what he's going to do because his ability to be flexible and just uh, just uh, react to what the defense throws him, you could have the best defense for that route. He's not going to run that route. He's going to, you, you know, if you're open, stay open, and if you're not, get open. That's how he does every play, and it's very, very unique. Greg Olson here on the Rich Eisen Show. Like I told you, you're so great at this. You're so terrific at it. You've excelled at it. You called last year's Super Bowl. We all know Tom Brady's joining Fox Sports yep. next year. Do you know what, what your 
2024 assignment is? is your yeah, so as, as of right now, you know, obviously we weren't sure if it was going to be for one year last year with the Super Bowl year and if Tom was going to come when he, when he retired. Right. He decided to sit out another year and take another year off, so it allowed me to call it for the second year this past season. And, um, you know, it was just a matter of when. You know, we didn't know sure. for sure how all the timing was going to work out and whatnot, but obviously it's pretty clear that Tom's going to come and he's going to take that seat alongside Kevin. And and that's we, – we knew two years ago we signed up for, but, you know, we think that the last two years what we've been able to, you know, put on tape, right, the, the, the players where it is, hey, you are what you put on tape, and that's how people judge you. We feel as good as, you know, as possible about what we can do. I feel like I – my goal is to call number one games. That has not changed. If anything, I'm even more committed to, to chasing that that path. And um, as of now, I'm still with Fox and going to be with Joe Davis on the number two crew and, mm -hmm. and go back, which was where Kevin and I were before we took over when Joe and Troy left. And, um, you know, so as of now, but listen, my, my goal, and I've been honest with Fox and they've been clear with me and uh, – I want to call top games. I want to call Super Bowls. I want to call games in front of 60 million people, 115 million people. You know, sure. That's where the magic is, and that's where the excitement is. No different than as a player. Nobody ever signs up to be a player to just say, I'm happy to be on the team. That's not my style. I'm not just happy to be on the team. And uh, how all of that shakes out, as we all know, you just can't predict this industry. But um, – I've enjoyed doing it. I love doing it, and uh, it's something I hope I get to do for a long time. Well, I, again, I I love your your honesty. You know, I, and that's you guys yeah, are you're, you're the man. Yeah, so. You know, your, yeah, your honesty you. is is and and I totally understand. You know, your approach and your opinion because I, I tell these guys all the time. My philosophy is not me than who, and if not now, when. So I take advantage of any opportunity, and I I I walk through front doors. I will tell anybody in management, this is what I prefer to do, this is what I'd like to do, and yep. if, then we have a conversation. And normally, you know, the, a lot of responses, hopefully, what I'd like to do, yep. and there's contracts and things of that nature, where. But, you know, you deserve to call games that you want to call. Well, I appreciate that. You know, and, and I, I want to make everyone sort of like you weren't going royal where you're talking about your agent and your representatives when, like, we feel that this is the – or maybe your family or ho <laughs> whomever when you're talking about we feel like we want to call the right game. You yeah. were using the we right there, you know. Yeah, and, 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 yeah and, I, and I think that's the collective we in the sense of that I didn't just get to do these – I didn't have these opportunities presented to me and I didn't do all of this by myself. Sure. It was not just, hey, I woke up one day and said, I'm going to go call games games and went and sat in a booth and did it. There was a lot of people, and Fox is at the top of that list, sure. right? They're the ones who let me call a game in 2017 when I was a player and joined a three-man booth remember with, that. with Charles and uh, Charles Davis yeah. and, and, and Kevin Burke. And other teams didn't want you in the yeah, production the Vikings, meetings, right? Yeah, the Vikings were not happy. Yes. They didn't, it, was a, it was a whole <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, but, you yeah. know, that was awesome. It was unheard of for a former sure. player to right. call. And at the time, that was the number two crew. I mean, they didn't stick me down the bottom. And then I did, a two, I did my first two-man booth with Kenny Albert in 2019 as a current player on a bye week and me and Kevin called five weeks, the only five weeks of the XFL. So, I mean, there was a lot of people and a lot of people that gave me opportunities when, you know, listen, I, 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 this is how I've summed it up from the beginning. I was never going to win the resume award against every former coach and every NFL quarterback who retired with a Hall of Fame jacket. Mm -hmm. Only way for me to ever survive in this industry and to ever ascend in this industry is to be good. That was, my, that was my only option. I didn't achieve – there was nothing else I could fall back on. Well, the guy's got – I needed to be good, and that's why I thought I could do the games because not everyone wants to do games. It, it's hard – you know, it's hard doing games. It's, it's hard, but it's, it's exhilarating. A, it's, there's nothing better. It's exhilarating. I love it, and I was confident that if I was given opportunities and people could look past, hey, he doesn't have, you know, 10 Super Bowls, he doesn't have a Hall of Fame jacket, you know, he didn't play in a major market, didn't play in Dallas or New York or wherever – could people just put all that aside and just go, how does he do this job? Mm -hmm. If that was the way everyone was being judged and whatnot, I felt like I could go toe to toe with anybody. And that was my approach early on. And I told Fox, I'm going to try to make this as hard as possible for you. And I was on, I'm on record saying that to them. And I say that in jest, but like, yeah. you wouldn't want me to approach it any other way. Yeah. You wouldn't want me to just roll over and die and just yeah. say, oh my God, I'm just happy to be here. No, I'm going to try to be great. If I am great, if I stink, it makes the job, it makes it a lot easier to be replaced. Well, um, you are great, so can yes. confirm. Um, what are you doing with Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey? What are I, you? I, 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 your guys over here are losing their minds. They are. <laughs> we want some. He's All right, so how many times have you guys watched a game, your team, just a game, and there's a bad call, the ball doesn't go your way, you throw a pick six, and you want to, like, smash your TV, you're yelling at people. And it, so we've got a solution for it, right? Oh. We call it Fireball the Call. You got your little cinnamon whiskey there, Fireball, next to you, and every time the game doesn't go your way, your guy drops a pass, wrong call. 
You throw the red challenge flag, take a shot. Ooh. <laughs> so it's a nice way to just move past. You get a little bit of a burn there. You move forward, Jeez. and it prevents smashing TVs. <laughs> it prevents. Now we're going to do this responsibly, obviously, because mm -hmm. we're not promoting irresponsibility yeah. on this Rich Eisen of show. Not. I appreciate it. But um, that's the campaign. It's been a blast. We, we made a fun little video that that got picked up pretty good a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's been a good time working with Fireball. It's been a blast. Well, I'm glad. Um uh, I don't never had this as a Jet fan because I'd have been blackout one quarter into the season <laughs> this year. I'd have been blackout on the floor. Uh, Greg, you're the best man. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.